Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. I have a new article from Daily Hodl titled Analyst Flips on XRP as Ripple Gears Up for Annual Crypto Conference in Singapore. So I want to talk about that. Uh, we've got uh, MoneyGram CEO Alex Holmes who will be speaking at the event. I want to share with you a tweet in this video, a pretty, pretty gosh darn new tweet from Brad Garlinghouse who's stating something rather bullish. Not really a surprise if you're in the XRP community, though, but he's stating that pre-funded accounts will become a thing of the past. And of course, that's all thanks to on-demand liquidity utilizing XRP as a bridge currency. Oh, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I've got an article uh, from Daily Hotel also titled, Bitcoin will be incredibly annoying that's a quote before surge to thirty thousand dollars says crypto analyst i've also got some uh, additional tweets from the xrp community and then i will wrap up the video with this piece from coin telegraph titled smart money came in after first bitcoin etf rejection now, before we get going here, if you would please delicately tap that like button, and if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. I think it's a pretty gosh darn good idea, don't you? And I gotta tell you right now, um, I, I'm surprised if I sound chipper. Uh, I, I I don't know. I'm a weird dude because it's 3:50 a.m. right now as I record this. I kid you not. 3:50 a.m. Saturday morning. So you might be saying, Moon Lambo, you silly buns, what are you doing awake at 3:50 a.m. recording a YouTube video? Well, I will tell you, my friend. I have to take my beloved Michelle, my beloved Moon Bay, to the airport because she has a 6 a.m. flight which means in about uh, 15 or 20 minutes, I'm going to be driving her to the airport because that's the kind of gosh darn good guy I am. Talk about relationship material. Moon Lambo's on it. And uh, um, so, yeah, and you, of course, you know, if you've flown before, you're well aware, you need to get to the airport a couple hours early to be safe. So uh, here I am. I woke, <laughs> woke up with her. She's doing some last minute packing, and I thought, okay, well, I've got a little time. I guess I'll just, uh, I'm going to record a video real quick because there's uh, some content that I uh, that I came across as I was sitting there scrolling on my phone. I was like, oh, yeah, this would be fun to do and cover. So here we are. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and hop into this. And so this first article in scrolling through my Twitter feed, I came across thanks to XRP Gator here, just happened upon it. And uh, that's the first piece I titled, Analyst Flips on XRP as Ripple Gears Up for Annual Crypto Conference in Singapore. Uh, Luke Martin of Venture Coinus says he's giving up on the potential for a big XRP pump ahead of Ripple's 2019 Swell Conference. Swell begins on November 7th in Singapore, and despite initially expecting the price of the third largest cryptocurrency to jump in advance of the event, Martin says his outlook has been invalidated. And here's a quote from him. I always love hearing from analysts. Check this out. Wrapping up this thread, as I don't have any interest in XRP anymore, the theme worked all the way through uh, October until Bitcoin took off, did not reach the final 4,000 stat target, back to where it started, maybe next swell. And I gotta tell you, I always love this stuff because the funny thing is, due to the tremendous correlation, it's notable of, uh, of XRP in terms of uh, price action relative to Bitcoin. Bitcoin can sneeze, and then whatever your chart analysis is for XRP, it's just suddenly invalidated. That's just the way this works. There's there's too much correlation. Even though, of course, as I always cite on this channel, XRP, out of the top 10 cryptocurrencies, is the second to least correlated in terms of Bitcoin price action, which I think is quite awesome, and it's also fascinating that uh, two or three times this year, XRP has led the market and Bitcoin has followed. I think that's a big news. Anyway. Uh, XRP spiked just before Ripple Swell Conference in 2018, jumping from 27.26 cents to a high of 61.77 cents about two weeks before the event took place. And yes, I do remember that massive jump. Uh, meanwhile, XRP's daily transaction volume is holding steady at near record levels. Uh, the XRP ledger has, ledger has processed 1.63 million transactions in the last 24 hours, according to BitInfo charts. Um, now, that's just shy of its all-time high of 1.7 million transactions, which was set back on January 16th, 2018. Now, as I pointed out, though, in recent videos, because a lot of people are still talking about this XRP community, uh, a lot of that has to do with IOUs issued on the ledger, not explicitly because of XRP-related transactions or... Uh, 
or or additional um, flows in in terms of payment and settlement thanks to on demand liquidity, which is the new name for X Rapid, of course. Uh, it's it's not really the case, but even so, even so, I think it's awesome. I reported on this in a video just yesterday about how. Uh, in, in terms of the the amount of volume going through uh, Bitso, which is a Ripple a partner, uh, an official Ripple partner exchange utilizing XRP uh, for on-demand liquidity, uh, you know their volume jumped. And again, I, I don't remember what the percentage is. It, maybe it was fifty percent or somewhere there about, but it was it was big, and uh, that was a result of just ten uh, percent of uh, of MoneyGrams flows. Uh, just ten percent of MoneyGrams flows payment flows from the united states to mexico the other 90 percent hasn't been utilized by on-demand liquidity yet but it's coming which is the coolest thing on the freaking planet i'm telling you utility matters and indeed will win the day uh last thing on price and then i want to share with you a, a, a tweet from brad garlinghouse on this but let me run through this real quick and then we'll get to ripple ceo brad garlinghouse this is titled bitcoin will be incredibly annoying before it surged to thirty thousand dollars says crypto analyst a leading crypto analyst expects Bitcoin to once again retreat and consolidate before the start of a new rally. The anonymous analyst, who goes by the name PhilbPhilb, that's a fun name, tells his 7,300 followers on TradingView that he expects Bitcoin to climb below $8,500 in the short term. And here's a quote. The, <clears throat> the working week bears have kept the weekend price action in check. And it doesn't look to me like there will be momentum to break through 9,500 with ease. 9,500 is textbook shorting territory at previous support, now resistance. And although resistance is there to be broken, it's looking increasingly difficult. Should we get the retracement that I am hypothesizing, I expect it to be into the mid-8,000s and fill the CME meme grab, which is incredibly annoying, but I suspect is destined to occur. Then the article continues, after the retracement, Phil Pilp expects Bitcoin to begin a long-term trend that could take it above $30,000 by June of next year. Whew. It's coming. Look, to me, it's, it's, it's always just a matter of time. Look, I don't know when the hell this is going to happen. A Moon Lambo does not make price prediction. Moon Lambo does refer to himself in the third person, though, at times. No price predictions for Moon Lambo, though. To me, it's just like it's a matter of time. It's going to come, but I'm not going to pretend like I'm some sort of wizard of smart knowing exactly when this is going to happen. I just have fun reporting on those that are willing to talk about it and put their neck on the line. And um, I'm just going to keep tracking the fundamentals because, again, if I'm right, utility, 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 that's it. That's what really matters. Now, take a look at this tweet from Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse. You my boy, Brad. And he says... Many have doubted the benefits of XRP, but you don't have to take my word for it. The proof is in the pudding. MoneyGram is experiencing real-time settlement, 60 seconds, in USD to Mexican pesos. Pre-funded accounts will become a thing of the past. Now, I know what you're all wondering after I read that to you. Why do keep people keep putting proof Inside of pudding. That's a delicious snack treat. Why are we putting proof there? It makes no damn sense. I'm with you. Brad Garlinghouse. Some things we're just never going to know. But look, I'll tell you what. Indeed, pre-funded accounts will become a thing of the past. And you know what's interesting, though? That, of course, is a bold statement, and I, I like it. Look, I, the, the, the funny thing, though, is depending on which Ripple employee you talk to, I've heard, I mean, of course, tremendously bullish things, but... Is it literally the case that all pre-funded accounts are going to go the way of the dodo? They will go extinct, or is it the case that the vast majority of them will go extinct, making them uh, almost meaningless in the in a future world where uh, you know the new way in which money moves around the planet, especially as it pertains to you know converting <clears throat> currency from one fiat to another fiat currency? Um, I don't know that they'll literally 100% go away because there's another problem. I, I cited this maybe once on the channel before or something like that. But it's just, and I haven't finished thinking through this to be perfectly honest, but <clears throat> the dilemma that I've come with is, because understand, the reason that it's possible to move money around the planet utilizing XRP, it's on-demand liquidity, it's because there's a sufficient blend of, of price and liquidity, right? So even, even if there's plenty of liquidity because people are trading it, Let's say that we reach a world where XRP is used for a say a large, whatever that means to you, a large percentage of transactions around the world. What would happen, hypothetically, if the price of XRP crashed? 
How would the world move money around if there are no longer any pre-funded accounts, if there's no longer sufficient liquidity? Because mind you, as it pertains to XRP, yes, the primary use case for XRP today, I think it's fair to say, is the way in which Ripple is utilizing it, positioning it to be used, XRP to be used as a bridge currency. But then, of course, you've got Coil. That's my second favorite one. And working on adoption there, too. But there there are going to be other use cases. But what I'm trying to get at, given that XRP is uh, utilizing distributed ledger technology, Ripple does not own the ledger, uh, the actions, uh, like the sum, uh, the total of, of all the actions occurring, so what all the developers building on top of the ledger are doing, it, what if a couple bad things happen pertaining to other developers not related to Ripple and the price drops? And uh, This is just a what-if scenario. I'm not saying this is going to happen. You know me, I'm Mr. XRP Bull, but I'm just saying what if it's a, even 10 years down the road and something like that happened, and now you don't have a sufficient blend of price and liquidity, how do you move money around the planet? And so this is just a thought exercise. That's all this is. You know, I just like thinking through this type of thing. To me, it's fun to think critically like this. And so if, if, there are, if we're in a world where there's literally no pre-funded accounts, are you in a pickle? You know, to, what does that look like? Or do, you, do you somehow have some sort of other cryptocurrency that can be used in place to fill in the gap with that liquidity? Maybe. I, I, I don't know exactly what that looks like. I'm kind of curious to hear what you guys think. And I, again, I'm posing the question. I have not finished thinking through that hypothetical, uh, not-so-fun scenario. But again, like I said, for me, it's just a fun thought exercise. So I don't know what that looks like. So that's why when Brad Garland has said this, it gets me thinking along those lines. Pre-funded accounts will become a thing of the past. Is that literally 100% true? Or is it more so just that it's going to be almost completely meaningless since there's a much better way to move money around the world? So uh, again, completely curious to hear your thoughts on that. And I'm not firm on that. I just, uh, one way or another, I just you know, posing the question. Take a look at this tweet from Lord Lionel. I like this. And this is on... a. Topic of swell coming up, a ripple swell. Lord Lionel tweeted out, Looks like we have confirmation MoneyGram will be using XRP globally by the time the swell event is on. Equals mass FOMO time. Now, I am happy to uh, engage with uh, other XRP community members um, that have different opinions than me. I love diversity of thought, and I will share mine because I interpret this a little bit differently. Um, it's perfectly okay to... Have for, I don't think this is some sort of outrageous opinion Lord Lionel has, and I like the tweets that he puts out, of course, most, most certainly. Uh, I, I, I don't... Okay, so... The rollout of on-demand liquidity utilized by MoneyGram, it's going to increase in fourth quarter, but even then, there are only two officially noted corridors, and maybe we'll hear more as well. Maybe. Maybe there'll be a couple more. But in terms of globally, global adoption, I, to what degree do you mean that, though? Because it, you, there aren't sufficient corridors to make that happen. There's not sufficient liquidity uh, for uh, you know for the use case of even just money. Like there just there isn't right now. But it, it's being built out. You know, it's you know, all, all good things in time is kind of my stance on that type of thing. So uh, people fomoing in based on that, eh, it's just my humble opinion, and I think it's okay to disagree. We're all still gonna be friends, right? Uh, I, I'm not so sold on that concept here, but you can see, so at 11 o'clock on November 8th, global payments that finally work, Ripple, so they're talking there, and then at 11.30, from zero to global, instant payments using digital assets, W. Alexander Holmes, CEO of MoneyGram, so he'll be speaking at 11.30 uh, in Singapore, November 8th. But I, I, just because they're using the word global, I, I didn't take it quite the same way that it, it seems that... Uh, that, that Lord Lionel uh, t took it here. But nonetheless, I, I don't get me wrong, I think it's it's awesome. I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, Alex Holmes has has to say here at, at Swell. Uh, check out this. This is a tweet from Stone Hodel XRP, and I just learned yesterday that he wants his name pronounced Stone Hodel XRP, not Stone Hodel XRP. Now, from my perspective, when I see H O D L, I think that it looks like it should be pronounced HODL. And given it's not a real world, world, <laughs> not a real word, uh, there's no right or wrong way to say it. It's not in the dictionary. And until it is one day and I'm told how I'm supposed to pronounce it, I'm going to say HODL. But out of respect for Stone HODL, who I... Who, I, uh, who tags me in a bunch of stuff, and I'm happy to cover as a result on the channel. I will, out of respect for you, Stone Hodel XRP, I will say your name as intended, even though I think you're doing it wrong. <laughs> but thank you very much for tagging me. So here's a, here's a little picture. It looks like uh, the Nike logo just hodl it. I'm going to get down on that. That is indeed what I'm doing. I am not a trader. I just hodl my XRP. And uh, let all the other people figure out uh, what's happening and 
the world of crypto, and I, again, I think eventually people are going to come to the same conclusion to me long term that uh, utility matters, and as long as XRP continues to get adopted, I think that I likely made a wise investment. Of course, that's not financial advice, and I don't have a financial background, just saying. All right, uh, and then check out this. This is cool. This is from XRP Research Center. New Ripple on-demand liquidity position in the UK. And it states, you will improve XRP liquidity at key exchanges to support on-demand liquidity growth, improve liquidity management for on-demand liquidity transactions, and three, improve routing logic to optimize velocity and value combinations for XRP movements in ODL. And so here you go. Ripple is not kidding around as it pertains to utilizing XRP in the real world uh, to, to move, move money around the planet. It is indeed happening, and they are hiring uh, perpetually, it seems. Last article, and then I better wrap this up because I have to drive my beloved Moon Bay to the airport in, uh, in like 10 minutes. So that does not give me much time to wrap up this last article here. Uh, upload, create a thumbnail, and uh, yeah, this is going to be cutting it close here. But I, I got to swear, if, if Moon Bay blesses her flight because because uh, I'm recording a video and uploading YouTube, I don't think that's going to go over well. So I will try to be prompt and get through this here. Um, so here we go. A uh, smart money came in after first Bitcoin ETF rejection, says analyst. Bitcoin changed its volatility characteristics as Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss unveiled the first Bitcoin exchange traded fund, ETF, New Data Claims. Uploaded to social media by well-known statistician Willy Wu on November 1st, a chart of Bitcoin volatility shows a new phase beginning around March 2017. This uh, the one, the uh, the time at which U.S. regulators rejected the Winklevoss's ETF application was nonetheless a watershed moment for Bitcoin. My thesis has always been that the 2017 Winklevoss ETF attempt was the first time in Bitcoin's history that it was described as a financial instrument instead of drug money. Wu summarized, and he added, "Quote: It was covered in the Wall Street Journal. Smart money came in. The rise of crypto quant." funds. Right? And then uh, according to Wu's chart, the ETF denial formed the definitive reversal of lessening volatility, which had characterized Bitcoin since 2012. Thereafter, volatility increased, albeit not to the extent seen during that year. Further ETF rejections similarly failed to produce the same price impact seen in March 2017. As Cointelegraph reported, volatility nonetheless remains a point of reflection for market participants keen to attract more new investment in into the uh, the cryptocurrency space. All right, and I should probably wrap it up here. Uh, Got to get Moonbay to the airport. She's gonna be gone for several days. It's just uh, me and Pet Peeve hanging out by our lonesomes. Too bad. I'm actually tired. I hope I sound lively. I, I got like th three hours of sleep, and the night before that I got, I don't know, four and a half or something like that. So I feel like I'm doing pretty well if I'm making most of my sentences um, articulately and mostly complete. So there we go. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!